Welcome to our world news program. Today, we have some incredible stories to share with you. First up, Chinese Olympic gold medalist Quan Hong Chan melted hearts around the globe as fans showered her with stuffed toys during her victory lap at the Paris Olympics. These dolls hold special meaning for Quan, who grew up in a financially struggling family and could never afford them. Her brother's emotional surprise visit and tearful message added to the touching moment, inspiring fans who have followed her journey for years. Next, in a move that has stirred quite the debate, China's anti-doping agency, Chinada, is calling for increased testing of American athletes following the controversial participation of Ariane Knighton in the 200m semi-final. Chinada has accused the United States Anti-Doping Agency of double standards, especially in light of past doping issues involving Chinese swimmers. This ongoing tension between the two agencies could have broader implications for international sports. Lastly, a significant legal case has unfolded as Chinese-born U.S. academic Xu Jun Wang was found guilty of acting as an agent for China's Ministry of State Security. Wang, once a prominent pro-democracy activist, faces up to 25 years in prison for supplying information to the Chinese government over a decade. This case serves as a stark reminder of the tactics used by intelligence agencies within diaspora communities worldwide. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage of these stories. South China Morning Post Fans showered Quan Hong Chan with dolls to show China's three-time Olympic gold medalist how much her story has touched them. Since striking her first Olympic title in Tokyo three years ago, Quan has been catapulted into the international limelight, and her double golds in Paris entrenched her as China's diving darling and a global phenomenon. But it is the 17-year-old's charm and her family's humble beginnings that have truly won the hearts of millions. As she paraded through her victory lap after clinching gold in the 10 meters platform final, fans showered Quan with stuffed toys. She loved dolls from a young age but, aware of her family's financial struggles, maturely avoided the subject. Apparently she's known to collect plushies so fans in the crowd threw dozens at her and now her backpack is completely covered in them. Other kids could buy snacks, her mother Feng Lingmei said. I had no money to give them, my kids. She likes dolls very much. But she dared not to ask me for them, because I had no money for her, to buy. Now an Olympic superstar. Quan's early understanding of her family's financial hardships indicated sensitivity and maturity beyond her years. Now everyone who loves her all over the world is giving her dolls, so don't worry, mum, one social media user said. The teenager's modest roots also cultivated deep emotional ties between herself and her family. After Quan's older brother shared on Weibo a touching video message for his little sister during the games, he took to the skies to surprise her in Paris. Clad in a red suit, symbolizing fortune and joy in Chinese culture, Quan's brother embarked on his family's first overseas trip to sit front row at Tuesday's 10-meter platform final. The whole family is gathered around the TV, so happy, her brother said in the video, crying. Your mother, her health has also improved a lot. Grandpa and grandma are in good health. They just miss you so much. He also reminisced about Quan's childhood, recounting how Quan used to eagerly wait for her mum to bring home dinner scraps from the canteen where she worked. The whole family is waiting for you at home, he added. I still want to tell you here that you have worked hard. People across the country have also seen that you left home from a young age, trained hard, became famous at a young age, persevered, overcame bottlenecks, and fought in Paris again. Your character and your past have always inspired us, as fans who have followed you for more than 10 years. South China Morning Post, China Anti-Doping Agency, Chinada, called for more frequent anti-doping testing of American track and field athletes, in light of the United States Arion Knighton completing his 200m semi-final despite having previously failed a doping test. The relationship between China and the United States Anti-Doping Agency, USADA, was already strained following the news disclosed earlier this year that 23 Chinese swimmers had been cleared to compete at the Tokyo Olympics in 2021 despite having previously failed a test. In the wake of that news, USADA was highly critical of the World Anti-Doping Agency's, WADA, handling of the case while Chinese athletes have claimed to be the most tested at the Paris Olympics, while swimmers have frequently been met with questions regarding potential doping after races. We strongly call on the International Testing Agency to intensify testing on the U.S. track and field athletes, a Chinada statement read. We also strongly recommend that the Athletics Integrity Unit strengthen anti-doping supervision of the U.S. track and field. Chinada also called for rebuilding the trust of global athletes in fair play. This is the second Chinada statement in a matter of days, the first coming in the wake of the revelation of Knighton's failed test in March and, in it, the organization criticized USADA for showing a typical double standard by demanding sanctions against Chinese athletes while failing to hold American athletes to account. 
Chineda also suggested Knighton may be part of a wider, systemic issue in the U.S. track and field team, given deep-rooted stains in the U.S. athletics and USADA's repeated disregard for procedures and standards. Examples listed included Carl Lewis testing positive three times before the 1988 Seoul Games and Justin Gatlin given a four-year period of ineligibility, as well as many more. In the case of the 23 Chinese swimmers, their positive test for trimetazidine, TMZ, was attributed to a contamination in their hotel, while for Knighton, his was eligible to race in Paris because it was accepted the banned substance of Trembolone had come from contaminated meat. Chineda warned that athletes should eat meat products with caution when training and competing in the US, since Trembolone seems to be a common contaminant there. Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Chinese-born United States academic Xu Jun Wang was known as a prominent pro-democracy activist, but a court has heard he was living a double life. After a one-week trial, a federal jury in New York on Tuesday convicted Wang of four counts of acting and conspiring to act as an agent of a foreign government. Prosecutors said he had been supplying information to China's main intelligence agency, the Ministry of State Security, for over a decade. He will be sentenced in January and faces up to 25 years in prison. Experts say the case exposes tactics used in diaspora communities all over the world, including Australia, but warn against the danger of witch hunts or the demonization of groups. Wang held himself out as a critic of the Chinese government so that he could build rapport with people who actually opposed it, then betrayed their trust by telling Beijing what they said and planned, the court heard. Daria Impiambato, a security analyst with the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, said Wang's conviction was significant because it was often difficult to prove the Chinese Communist Party's CCP, covert influence, interference and espionage tactics. Chinese dissident groups, both inside and outside China, have been subject to infiltrations for a long time, be that through untrustworthy members of their communities doing the work in person, or accounts infiltrated into WeChat group chats, for example, Ms. Impiambato said. The fact that someone as high-profile as Wang is brought to justice would send shock waves throughout those communities, and unfortunately further undermine their unity and trust, that is ultimately one of the major goals of CCP foreign interference efforts. Wang composed emails, styled as diaries, that recounted conversations, meetings and plans of various critics of the Chinese government. Instead of sending the emails and creating a digital trail, Wang saved them as drafts that Chinese intelligence officers could read by logging in with a shared password, prosecutors said. In other, encrypted messages, Wang relayed details of upcoming pro-democracy events and plans to meet with a prominent Hong Kong dissident while the latter was in the US, according to an indictment. Wang had pleaded not guilty. His lawyers cast him as someone who was forthcoming with US authorities about activities he saw as innocuous and that he spoke to the Chinese intelligence officials to win their support towards the pro-democracy movements. For Chinese officials who were charged alongside him remain at large. Lu Pingyu, a spokesperson for the Chinese embassy, said in a statement Tuesday that he was unaware of the specifics of the Wang case but that China opposes the United States' slander and political manipulation. South China Morning Post. Hong Kong stocks retreated to the lowest level seen since April, with the Hang Seng Index dropping 0.7% to 16,760.52 by mid-morning. The tech index fell 1.2% and the Shanghai Composite Index lost 0.5%. The market downturn was influenced by weak consumption and deflation concerns in mainland China. Major stocks like electric vehicle maker BYD and Meituan saw significant declines. Investor sentiment remains shaky amid global recession fears, Japan's monetary tightening, and a sell-off in AI-driven semiconductor companies. Black Sesame International, a Chinese semiconductor company, had a rough debut, plummeting 25% from its offering price. Al Jazeera. Bangladesh's economy is under severe pressure amid unprecedented political turmoil, triggered by student protests since July 1. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina fled to New Delhi, leaving businesses to grapple with billions of dollars in losses. Nobel laureate Mohammed Yunus is set to guide an interim government, but the situation remains volatile. The protests have led to significant disruptions, including the temporary closure of garment factories, a key sector for the economy. Analysts warned that the instability could deter foreign investment and disrupt supply chains. The interim government's immediate focus should be on restoring law and order to stabilize the economy and reassure investors. Australian Broadcasting Corporation Australia has had a historic day at the Paris Olympics, breaking its previous gold medal record. In just over five hours, the country added several medals to its tally, 
including a dramatic bronze in the mixed relay race walk marathon by Jemima Montag and Ridian Cowley. Skateboarder Keegan Palmer and cyclist Sam Wellsford also secured golds, while Matthew Denny took bronze in the men's discus final. Australia's success across multiple sports is attributed to a strong focus on athlete well-being. The country's previous record for total golds was set in Athens 2004 and Tokyo 2021, but the current games are shaping up to be its most successful ever. Associated Press, Asian shares took a hit early Thursday, following Wall Street's decline led by falling tech stocks. Japan's Nikkei 225 dropped 2.4%, Australia's S and PASX 200 shed 0.6%, and South Korea's Kospi fell 1.8%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng also declined by 1.1%. Despite Wall Street's slump, it wasn't as severe as previous global market upheavals. Japanese officials attempted to calm fears over potential rate hikes which had contributed to heavy selling earlier in the week. The Japanese yen stabilized against the US dollar, and both Honda and Sony reported positive financial results. Meanwhile, Taiwan's trade data indicated continued growth in tech-related exports. On Wall Street, Nvidia's significant losses were offset slightly by Apple's gains, as investors anticipated potential interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. Yahoo US a video of a factory fire in southern Taiwan was falsely circulated on social media as footage of recent military conflicts in Myanmar. The clip, showing a massive column of black smoke, was misrepresented as an airstrike on ammunition storage in Lokai, near the Chinese border. However, the video actually depicted a fire at an industrial park in Tainan, Taiwan. The original footage, verified by Taiwanese media and matching Google Maps imagery, showed features of the Shanshang Industrial Zone. This incident highlights the ongoing turmoil in Myanmar following the 2021 military coup and the spread of misinformation online. South China Morning Post, Ho Jiehui, China's weightlifting star, described her Olympic gold medal win in Paris as the most thrilling competition of her career. Facing the prospect of a bronze medal, Ho needed to break her own record in the clean and jerk to secure gold. Despite failing her first attempt at 117 kg, she succeeded on her second try, lifting a total of 206 kg. This victory came after intense competition from Romania's Mihaela Cambe and Thailand's Suridkana Cambeo. Ho's dramatic win underscores the importance of weightlifting in the Olympics, despite the sport's reduced presence due to doping scandals. Cambe emphasized the sport's value, particularly for female athletes, advocating for its continued inclusion in the Olympic program. South China Morning Post China has confirmed the discovery of a significant natural gas field named Lingxue 36 to 1 in the South China Sea, which is estimated to contain over 100 billion cubic meters of natural gas. This gas field is notable for being the world's first ultra-shallow gas field in ultra-deep waters, according to the Xinhua News Agency. The China National Offshore Oil Corporation, CNUC, announced this breakthrough in June, and it was officially reviewed and registered by state authorities recently. The exact location was not disclosed but it lies in water southeast of Hainan, China's southernmost island province. The South China Sea is a contentious area with overlapping claims from Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, and Taiwan, often leading to disputes and tensions over resource exploration. The Lingxue 36-1 field, located in the western South China Sea at a depth of around 1,500 meters, has been tested to produce over 10 million cubic meters of natural gas per day. Sinuk's president, Zhou Xinhui, emphasized the strategic importance of the South China Sea for boosting natural gas reserves and production, aiming to develop a trillion cubic meters gas region. As the world's largest natural gas importer, China's energy security could benefit significantly from this discovery. However, developing these resources might face diplomatic and political challenges from rival claimants. Historical tensions include the 2014 anti-China protests in Vietnam triggered by Sinuk's oil rig operations near the Paracel Islands and various confrontations between Chinese and Vietnamese vessels over oil drilling in disputed areas. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, 
the 6do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6do Brief via email.